Uh, let's come to Europe for a second because there are some very interesting geopolitical issues are at play. It's not just Fukushima. It's not just a retrenchment in Germany from nuclear because of concern of a, a nuclear accident. <clears throat> It's other things that are happening. It's the Ukraine, it's Crimea, it's mm -hmm. Europe's kind of realization, again, that it's so dependent upon 30% of its gas consumption comes from Gazprom in, in, in Russia, and they've turned off the spigot periodically. And we've seen a tick up in coal usage there as well. So give us, the, give us that horizon, uh, 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 please. There's two ways to de-risk the Ukraine. You can find alternative sources of cheap gas or you can use more coal as baseload, or you can increase their energy efficiency, or you can increase all the other portfolio options for producing energy. And so I think it's another clear example that when we go down a path and we say we're going to eliminate a fuel source and we're going to go to a nether predominant fuel source, we are setting ourselves up for disaster from an economic perspective. And if we have a disaster on an economic perspective, it doesn't matter how hard we try on an environmental perspective, we're not going to get where we want to get to. So some of the countries of Europe have already been turning to coal. Have you seen your business pick up? Absolutely, uh, yeah. I mean, you look at Germany, you look at, uh, you look at Italy, you look at uh, Spain, um, even the UK, we're seeing increasing imports of coal uh, as they continue to try and balance where they get their energy from. Um, and Germany for obvious reasons because of their transition from, from, from nuclear and we heard a little bit about their grid instabilities because of, uh, because of the renewables um, and, and, and Italy and Spain because of the pure cost of power. Right. Um, so that's the European situation. When you, look at, you know, when you look at the rest of the world, you look at the developing countries, whether it's Brazil, whether it's China, whether it's India, Quite frankly, we're seeing interest in Turkey and Pakistan, parts of the Middle East, where you would expect that they would be using other fossil fuels. Um, they're looking at coal because of the stability that it provides. Um, and, it's, uh, and, and if you will, it's the least geopolitically driven fossil fuel. It's available. It's available everywhere. Regardless of revolution in Libya or that's exactly right. else. Belgium is using more coal because it wants to take some of the leverage that Gazprom has over its, uh, over its mm -hmm. gas contracts. So there too, it's a, probably a little bit of surprise to most people that Europe, which is kind of considered a little bit further along and it's sinking on renewables, is actually t turning a little bit more now to coal as well. That's exactly right. I mean, at, 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 the end, at the end of the day, you cannot separate a discussion around economic activity, political stability, um, energy supply from you know, environmental objectives. Um, and I think what we're finding is, is if you get one too far out ahead of the other and you say, we're going to drive everything based on a singular view on the environment versus how does it impact the economic activity and the energy equation, you're going to get it wrong. You know, Spain, Spain had 30% unemployment while they were saying that they were the most advanced renewable country in Europe. Well, something's wrong with that equation. You know, we're here in California, and California has made a lot of progress, but it's also shipped a million manufacturing jobs out of this state over the last 10 years. So is that, is that the right balance and the right equation? We want to bring manufacturing jobs back to the U.S., and low-cost natural gas is going to allow us to do that, but we're not going to do it if we double the price of electricity in this country because we don't maintain baseload generation um, coming from coal, coming from nuclear, uh, coming from those sources that will provide stability within the grid.